You know, one of the things I love about this space is the stained glass windows here in the sanctuary and in the chapel. I like the windows themselves, the stories they tell, but what I value more is the names. As Derry was rebuilding its, uh, was building its chapel, redesigning its sanctuary, people, churches, and Sunday school classes, even town citizens, gave in the hope that Derry would survive and thrive and be a blessing to the community. You've heard in these heritage moments when the church was down to 12 members, they, the old dairy was falling apart, they needed a new building, and other churches of the presbytery came together and gave so there'd be a chapel that could be built when there were only 12 members. I think because they had hope that dairy could survive and thrive and be a blessing to the community. That's one reason why the session recently approved this new idea, a grant called Churches Helping Churches, in which churches from the presbytery can apply for this grant for up to $10,000 that we can help them meet a building need they have that they can't afford right now. Maybe it's fixing a roof, expanding a building, doing something that they couldn't do without this grant. Because Derry survived and thrived because of the generosity of other churches and hopes that it would do good. As part of our 300th anniversary, we want to do the same thing, pay it forward again, and stay with other churches and hope that this money can help them continue to thrive and be a blessing to their community. But I wonder if you've taken the time to read all the names in these rooms on the windows, here and in the chapel. Some of you have your names here on windows and on stones and benches, some have gone on to glory, but we are surrounded by the names of the faithful. I think it's too important to remember that they are there. I feel comforted and hopeful when I come in here surrounded by this beauty, this history, and these saints. The names of the faithful are all around us. I find it inspiring and hopeful to remember their stories, to remember that other churches said, we believe in you, we want to help you, that people from the town said, we think it's important that you continue to exist. That gives me hope. During COVID, when there was no one in here, we had your pictures taped to all the pews. It helped me feel connected to you. It reminded me of your faithfulness. It inspired me and gave me hope. And one thing we know in our bones, to be a people of hope in this world, it requires some inspiration. Because every day the world brings news that makes us want to give up hope. Give up hope that goodness can thrive, that our better angels can emerge. Just again this week we learned of another tragic school shooting. It's so easy to give up hope. Paul knows that hope takes courage and grit and discipline. Hope requires taking the long view, and to do that, we need inspiration and encouragement. While every day can bring bad, disheartening news, the truth is encouragement and inspiration are all around us. Sometimes faith is simply a matter of paying attention. On May 27, 1992, a mortar exploded in the middle of Sarajevo, it was a common occurrence as what had been Yugoslavia was crumbling into ethnic divisions. Old hatreds and injuries rushed to the surface. The bomb fell on a line of people standing outside of a bakery waiting to get bread. Twenty-two people died. More than a hundred were injured. Vidran Semelovic, a cellist in the Sarajevo Philharmonic, arrived the next day in his concert tuxedo with his cello and played Albanoni's Adagio in G minor in the bomb crater that was still stained with blood. It was the piece you heard Ali play on the cello this morning. The next 22 days he returned and did the same, but he varied his time so that the snipers could not anticipate it. It was a tribute to the 22 lives who had been taken away so unfairly. It was a performance of defiance, creating something beautiful in the face of such horror. And it was an act of steadfast hope. He was holding on to the dream of peace, even though the threat of mortars were, was a part of everyday life. 
He forced beauty into a place of atrocity to insist that evil will not last forever. Pain will pass. Tomorrow can be a new day, not just today lived again and again and again. He was taking the long view, not settling for the status quo. Hope is like that. Paul says, I thank God for your steadfastness of hope. There is no other kind of hope save that which is steadfast. If we can fix it today, if we can make things right today, if we can get it today, we do not need hope. With Amazon Prime, you get it the next day, you don't need hope, it's going to come. You don't have this, I wonder if the mail service is going to work anymore. But hope is that which stands in the face of all that has gone wrong and insists that life can be kinder, more just, more humane. Theologian Reinhold Niebuhr once said, Nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Niebuhr understood that hope is taking the long view. It's planting the grove of trees you'll never see fully grown. It's helping a church with 12 members build a chapel in hopes that one day it'll fill that chapel, expand to a sanctuary have a flood of children talking about what they practice and what they hope for. It's leaving a bequest, not being sure, not ever seeing how that money will be used, but trusting it'll be used for good and glorious and beautiful things. The faith we profess and share is a faith of big dreams and big hopes, of justice rolling down like waters, of swords being beaten into plowshares, of the world being redeemed and love being the currency of every relationship. To be a people of enduring hope, we do not expect that life to be realized today. I don't. I don't expect it, as Niebuhr says, even in my lifetime. But hope means every day we live toward God's promise day. We said last week that faith is work because it's not limited to what we think. It shows up in our choices Next week, we'll talk about how love is a labor because it's not limited to what we feel, but it shapes our actions. Hope is the same. Hope is less an attitude and more of a practice. Hope endures because it is a discipline. Vedran Smailovic didn't just wish that peace would come. He brought beauty, a reminder of our better angels. He lived his hope. Paul says, I give thanks for your endurance, which is empowered by hope. For the Thessalonians, hope was a requirement. Paul's ministry lasts from maybe about 33 CE to 58 or so, about 25 years. The letters that he wrote were all written probably in the last seven or eight years of his ministry. As we said last week, 1 Thessalonians, it seems, was the first written, at least the first one we have a record of, probably written about the year 50. During this time, Christian missionaries like Paul had gone, gone to Rome were preaching that Jesus was the Messiah. This created a, a tension between these missionaries and traditional Jewish practice. And there were riots about it. The Roman emperor Claudius would not tolerate unrest, so he expelled the Jews, including Jewish Christians, from Rome, ran them out of the city. Professor Eugene Boring says it's likely that these refugees found their way to Thessalonica, and tensions were high. Therefore, the people to whom Paul writes were viewed with suspicion by traditional Judaism. It's an argument that divided families. And now the Roman government was beginning to look upon the followers of Jesus as national security threats. Within a few years, Nero would be emperor, and Nero would persecute the Christians. For the Thessalonians, the very act of gathering together of sharing the sacrament, of welcoming men and women, slave and free, Jews and Gentiles, all at the same table, was an act of hope. Hope is not simply an attitude. It's a practice. Now, we clearly live in a different time, but our lives still need to be shaped by hope as well. Every time you give to dairy or make an estimate of giving, that's an act of hope. When we baptize children, as we'll do at the end of this service, we don't know who they will become. 
what great things they might do, but we do know this. They will need a church. They will need a community committed to the work of faith, the labor of love, love, and the endurance of hope. That's why your generosity matters. Every gift you give is providing hope and helps Derry live towards God's promised day with faith, hope, and love as we proclaim God's word, share God's love, and practice God's justice. I believe we give hope. We give hope to those who need medical care through our partnerships with Christ Lutheran and Hope Within and the Community Checkup Center. We provide hope for those who need a stable home and community through our investment in the Tiny Homes Veterans Community in Harrisburg, building homes in the Dominican Republic, supporting shelters like Bethesda Mission. We provide for those who know that their best hope for a better life is through education, by providing scholarships and expanding schools in Pakistan and in Harrisburg. Some of us will go down on Thursday morning to the dedication ribbon cutting of the new classroom that you helped fund and build down at the Logos Academy in Harrisburg. You can buy a Christmas ornament after the service, knowing that that money goes to provide a scholarship for a boy or girl to go to school in Pakistan. We have been a place of joy and friendship, the importance of which we see with new eyes after the pandemic of a few years ago. We have stood with people in their darkest hours when grief came with a vengeance. We have baptized little ones and made a promise to them and to God that we will be a community where they can grow up to know that they are loved by God and loved by us. We have expanded our ministry as every Sunday we welcome online worshipers from across the country, even around the world. What I'm saying is that we are being the church, and you are making it happen. Through your time and your talent, your volunteering, your passion, your giving, it's a work of endurance, and it's fed by hope. You do all these things. You show up, you work in the kitchen, you teach Sunday school, you clean up the grounds, you serve mobile meals, you build a home in the Dominican because you hope it makes a difference because you hope that by sharing the love that shapes you, it'll inject love and hope into another life. It'll bring good things. I think we have to have hope to do this work, because every day the world can break your heart. Every day injustice reigns, and hatred blooms, and heartbreak is common, and the world wants you to give up. The sad reality is we will wake up to another tragic death or shooting, the news of another dear friend with a terminal diagnosis, another war, another scandal, another dire warning of climate change, another disaster, another disappointment. It'll come. It'll probably come tomorrow in some way, and the next, and the next. But God will show up every day too, as will the cloud of witnesses, and I think you'll show up as well. So remember the names that surround us as we worship, and remember the inspiration that is all around us, the stories, the endurance of hope. Pay attention. We are not alone in this labor of love. We are not alone in this endurance that is born of hope. Jesus is Lord. In this world that can break your heart every day, remember, Jesus is Lord. Love will win. Redemption is coming. There is never a day when we need to give up hope. And like Paul, I too thank God for your endurance that is generated by hope. Hope. It is what dairy is. It's what we hold on to and who we are. That's the story of dairy over its 300 years. It's a story of hope. Hope received, hope shared, hope given. Hope lived. And I thank God for that. Let us pray together. God of life and love and hope, we thank you for the hope that you give us. We thank you for your promised day. We thank you that we have each other, this great cloud of witnesses here in this room and surrounding us in the community and in your heavenly kingdom and in our past and in our heritage and even in our future. Lord, thank you for all the saints who have lived their hope, and who inspire us. Lord, help us to share your hope 
through how we live and the choices we make. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.